there are creatures that have existed for millions of years before humans, outnumbering us in the universe at an incomprehensible scale. Virtually impossible to kill, their entire purpose is to reproduce and consume these creatures. Insects. Real size. In space, no one can hear you scream. Such is the tagline of Ridley Scott's Alien, which has to do with vacuums, which is another lesson entirely, so that's wrong. Meet Ripley. Her ship, the Nostromo, meets some nasty new friends. These aliens, or xenomorphs as us nerds call them, have three part bodies. Head, thorax, abdomen. Covered in a hard exoskeleton, they're protected from nearly all harm. Except, thankfully, fire and the airless vacuum of space. Again, don't ask, not today. Xenomorphs will eat nearly everything, which makes them omnivores. To aid in attacking their prey, xenomorphs possess strength far beyond their size. And don't forget the acid he spit! What's that for exactly? Digestion! But we may be getting ahead of ourselves. Xenomorphs hatch from eggs into a larva stage. From there, they may use a host as they advance into their pupil stage, eventually shedding their skin to reach adult. This process is called gross, but also Metamorphosis. Ripley meets social colonizing aliens. Operating as one, a colony of xenomorphs can be considered a superorganism. Depending on the needs of the colony, they hatch in different forms. This is called polymorphism. The different forms of xenomorphs are female soldiers and workers, male drones, and queens. Each colony usually has but one queen. The largest of the group, she can usually be found by skipping to the third act of the movies in the Alien Trilogy. The Alien series has seven movies. It is therefore not a trilogy. Um, forget you heard that. Web series rerouted. Return to Earth to teach about insects for analysis. But wait, I did teach about insects. Everything I said about aliens is completely true for Earth's insects. All of it, except the part about vacuums, but that's another day. There are over 10 quintillion insects on Earth. Mosquitoes carry malaria which kills millions of humans please are responsible for carrying the bubonic plague which killed one-sixth of humanity. But some are good for us, right? Like ladybugs and praying mantis. Bees make honey and pollinate our plants. Plus, why should I believe you? I mean, ten quantillion feels like a made-up number. No matter what you say, I know insects are a vital part of both our environment and our food cycle. It's not game over. I can't lie to you about your chances. You have my sympathies.